video is mainly going to be in my office because I'm not really filming a video today. It's the last day here in Patagonia and I've just been walking around with all of the participants, uh, showing them various locations and on my way back to this lake behind me, which is where most people are, I stumbled upon this lovely little scene here with the, the interesting curvaceous swerving dead wood leading straight up to the Quernos behind me there. Now the thing is with this location and what I try to, the message I try to get across is that everybody assumes that you need this lake in your foreground so you get the driftwood, the lake, the mountains and that is nice but that shouldn't stop you from exploring other ideas. It's very windy and cold here so um, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk for too long, but I just wanted to show this scene, share it with you, and I expect we're gonna go back to my office where it should be a lot warmer and more comfortable than it is here. But yeah, um, I'll talk more about this shot, the settings, editing and processing it. It looks great. I really like it. The light's coming now, so I'm gonna put you down, get the shot, and probably uh, cut back. To the office so yeah there you go all right over and out all right so we're back in the office let me tell you it was brutal down there on the beach really windy cold raining sleet snow everything was changing i felt rushed it was it was great actually i actually love photographing in those conditions um and yeah it was all good and the funny thing is if you watched my last video which was the reflections video that was photographed in the exact same location only a day earlier so it just goes to show how rare those calm and still conditions were and if you haven't watched a video i'll just link to it up here but this yeah this is typically how it is there which actually is why you get amazing conditions all of the well most of the time and all of that drama and light it's because of the weather that comes through there Right, so, um, yeah, you could see from the conditions that it was challenging for me to film. So here we are, and I'm gonna talk you through the image, um, some observations, and we'll do a very quick processing. I'm gonna try and process this image in like three minutes or something like that. I don't think it's an image that needs over editing. When you get good light, good composition, good subject, generally that's all the hard work done. So you just need to tweak things. Um, that's what I find. Got two photographs that you can see here, both identical, both taken 10 seconds apart. The only difference is I focus stack them. So the first image you can see I focused on the mountains in the background. The second image I focused on the tree roots here. And if I click onto this photograph and scroll down to the tree root, you can see the difference. This is really soft, there's no detail and we go on to this one and it's lovely and crisp and there's lots and lots of detail. And that's why I focus stack because it's not possible to get that amount of depth of, depth of field unless you have a tilt shift lens, which I don't. So I really only have two observations about this photograph. Observation number one is this area here. As you can see, oh, there is some dirt on my lens. Uh, so that's no good, but uh, easy to get rid of. The second observation, I'm not, not sure how I feel about this. This tree trunk, which is breaking the horizon and going into the mountains and the sky, it bothered me a bit on location, but there was nothing I could do about it. So I didn't let it annoy me too much. But actually with this detail here, the hole in the tree trunk where you can see through to the mountains, I really like that detail. And for me, that just about saves the day. So I'm recording my screen, you can see what I'm doing. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Now the second thing that I always do with vertical images is apply a crop, usually a four by five crop because I don't like the three two aspect ratio on vertical images. You know, unless the subject is right, which for me, most of the time it isn't. Um, for me, it looks too tall and thin. So four five crop, yeah, just there we go. Um, and I, when I was shooting the photograph, I had this crop in mind, so I left enough space, top and bottom. That's really important as well. I'll start with the sky, or not the sky, but the top half of the image, the mountain. I'm gonna apply a radial filter and give it some clarity, because there was a lot of weather moving through, and although I quite like that the mountains are shrouded, um, I do feel they need a bit more contrast and a bit more oomph. 
that's the technical term there, oomph. So you can see here I'm just applying a radial filter uh, onto the areas of the mountains and I'm going to just give it a little bit of, little bit of clarity there, uh, some contrast. Let's see, reduce the blacks a little bit, yeah, can we lift the whites, is that, is that going to work? Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Don't want to overdo this. Uh, but they already that is looking um, a lot more. You know, has a more bite to it, which is good. Right, this area here, hot spot. It's too bright. I'm going to get another radial filter, and we're going to go highlights, and we're just going to draw a nice big circle here. Let's bring it, extend it up a little bit to that cloud. Um, bring the highlights down. Just to be safe I'm going to apply a luminosity mask or a luminance mask and just tell it to only apply those effects which is the highlights to the brightest part of the image by sliding across this slider here. Uh, yeah there we go hotspot is no more. Got to get rid of this pesky dirt on the lens. Oh so easy. Don't you just love technology? I guess the next thing I need to focus on is the bottom half of the image. It looks a little bit flat, so I'm going to get a graduated filter upside down and just angle it onto the beach like so. So I'm going to reduce the blacks on this. Just being careful. Don't want to overdo it. Don't want to really don't want to overdo it. Just want to give this, you know, give make those um, the black shingles want them to really look black and, and crunchy. I'm going to lift the whites, which will just help lift out and emphasize this tree root here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Haven't done a great deal. So that's looking, it's looking okay to me. I can't really see it. I don't really want to do a great deal more. What I will do is I'll just increase the vibrance, the overall vibrance of the image. Just give it a bit more pop because on location there was lovely pink purple hue a kind of a glow reflected light off the clouds above so I just want to make sure that I uh, emphasize that I'm just gonna go back to my graduated filter and just see about dropping the exposure a little bit less than half a stop make sure I just lift those highlights and the whites there we go. That, and that, all that's doing is just giving a bit more, a bit more contrast down below, and it's emphasising more the tree root, and that's what I want it to be about. I want it to be about the tree root and the mountains. Okay, looking good. I think I'm pretty happy with this so far. Finally, I want to apply a vignette. I do like a vignette, very subtle vignette. Let me just make that into a thumbnail. The reason I look at a thumbnail when I'm applying a vignette is you get a better overall feel for the vignette and if it's too strong or not strong enough. And also looking at a thumbnail of your image really helps with gauging and judging the composition. I would say that this is good, I'm happy. What I'm going to do is apply all of the effects to the second image, sync everything. So now I'm just going to merge, open them as layers in Photoshop and merge them to essentially do the focus stack. I can do this so quickly. We're getting to the end of the video. So do bear with me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select both the layers, go into edit and auto align layers, just like so. Okay. And now it's just a case of figuring out that point where the focus merges. The next thing I'm going to do is just apply a layer mask to the top layer. And I'm just going to paint away the foreground of the top layer, which will reveal the sharper layer below. And hopefully we won't be able to see any funny business. Now, oh, these pebbles here. Yeah, they're sharp. So looking about here. I'm very fast and loose with this, I really am. Looking at this, I don't see any areas that strike me as being odd. 
Okay, so I'm like, I'm happy with that. I'm happy. I've just had a look at 100% there or thereabouts and it looks good. So one other thing that bothers me is this stone just here. I'm going to get rid of that. And actually, whilst I'm getting rid of that, look at this edge here. You see this? That is due to the auto alignment of the layers. So if you ever auto align your layers in Photoshop, you should always apply uh, a crop afterwards just just to get rid of those edges there there we go and then we'll check the top you can see there's a line here it's more prominent on this side just there we need to make sure that we get rid of that and then we go down and we check the other right hand side yep there it is and we'll check the bottom the bottom's fine alrighty so and there we have it, the finished image, edited in hopefully <laughs> hopefully not too long. Um, but yeah, I didn't do a great deal there, just a few local changes, local adjustments, and then I stacked the two images in Photoshop, and the result is, uh, is an image that I am happy with, and it was quite a nice photograph, so I'm happy to have shared this with you today. I hope you've learned something, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, that's all from me, so thank you so much for watching and tune in next time. So until then, bye bye for now. <laughs>